Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Vanessa Nairco. My pronouns are she, her. Today I'm wearing a blue blazer, a black shirt with my studio's logo on it, black pants, and white sneakers. I'm a senior story producer over at The Coalition, and I'm here today to talk to you about narrative moments on a budget and how you can stretch your storytelling dollars across the moments that matter. But first, a little bit about what I do and the studio that I'm from. So story is a big umbrella, and as a senior story producer, I drive the elements and, and the teams that craft an immersive storytelling experiences. So that's everything from the inception and ownership of casting and writing to the content teams that work together to develop the cohesive narrative between cinematics, narrative design, and in-game sequences. I also work with a phenomenal team of directors, leads, and content developers to bring great stories to life. And I hail from the Coalition Studio that is based in Vancouver, Canada. It's the home of the Gears of War franchise and a flagship first-party studio for Xbox Game Studios. So now that I've told you a little story about myself, I want to start by introducing you to another that ends with a tricky question. But first, we begin where all great stories do, at the beginning. So, storytelling in game dev has an almost impossible puzzle to solve. We need to build worlds and stories that are rich enough to draw players in, get our own visions across, excite returning gamers, and retain new ones. All while delivering, hopefully, on time and on budget. And because creativity knows no bounds, it's sometimes very easy to stay in our blue sky stage of thinking, especially when it comes to narrative. Because not only do we want to tell great stories, we need to see them through to the end. They need to feel satisfying. Some of them may even have branching dialogue with complex character arcs and multiple themes. And to be honest, we feel incredibly attached to the stories that we make. And as much of it as it's difficult to stop ourselves from listening to a great story, it's equally as hard to hold ourselves back from telling one. So it's true, storytelling in game dev has a near impossible puzzle to solve. And I say near impossible because it's not without a solution. I'm sure all of us here are familiar with the old adage, games don't ship because they're done, they ship because they have a deadline. But the first part of the tricky question is this. What if we could change all that? What if we could develop the stories we want with a better control of what needs to stay in, what needs to be whittled down, and create great stories within the scope of our games that we're immensely proud of? Simply put, how do we tell great stories on a budget? When everything is important, but time and budget is limited, how can we empower developers with the support they need to approach the complex decisions of how we choose to invest our narrative bandwidth? In this talk, I hope to provide a foundational framework of how you can spend your narrative dollars across the stories you develop, now the simple act of making the methods focus, focuses decision making in more productive and informed ways. And this is going to be true for games of any scale and teams of any size, whether it's AAA or a new indie. If your team is passionate about the stories that you want to tell, you don't need millions of dollars or hundreds of devs to tell a great one. It should be noted before I start this talk that this is not a talk on how to write a great story. This is a talk on how to prioritize your great stories so that it's told in the best way feasible. And so why talk about this at all? Why is it important? Because a great story in its simplest form is one with a great beginning, middle, and end. And since all games, regardless of the scale of your production, have budgets and deadlines, when we fail to prioritize, prioritize effectively delivering the beginning, middle, and end of our story, we fail to deliver a great story altogether, regardless of how we try to make up for the lost time or the lost effort later on in production. So that brings us back to our near impossible problem. How do we tell great stories on a budget? Well, first, we need to develop a framework. We do this by identifying our core narrative beats, clarifying our story critical path, and following what I like to call the 3 2 1 approach to empower decision makers and hold ourselves accountable. This framework can be universal and works to build a strong narrative budget because all great stories start the same. By first identifying our core narrative beats and our story critical path, we're able to create the control center of our game's narrative. So let's dive into identifying these key terms as they'll set us up for creating our approach for spreading our narrative dollars across the moments that truly matter. First up, core narrative beats. So these are the foundational tenets of the overall story through which the story critical path is weaved. These are usually the most impactful story beats that are agreed upon at a high level, usually during pre-production. 
You can think of your core narrative beats sort of like your story pillars. And while your story pillars can exist without cinematics or whatever high value narrative devices you're employing in your own game, those high value narrative devices should rarely exist without outside the core narrative beats. And this is usually because they're high cost, meaning that they're high investment. So they want to, you want to put them in the place that most players are likely to see them. Next up is our story critical path, which are the moments of the game represented by missions or narrative devices that are pivotal to tying the main parts of your narrative of the game together. To put this another way, these are the elements of the story that if removed would either make your overall narrative completely nonsensical or create a noticeable disconnect in your plot or gameplay. These are usually objectives along a chronological path that service the core narrative beats and are sometimes referred to as the golden path. All right, so I like visuals, so let's break this down to an example that I hope we all know and love, The Lion King. And if you have not seen The Lion King up until this point, I have to tell you that this is going to be a spoiler, and I am so sorry, um, but I hope you have seen The Lion King, or at least have read Hamlet. So here, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So here we see our core narrative beats that help guide the story, and then the story critical path, which would include missions or gameplay, if The Lion King was a game, that are crucial to get from one narrative beat to the next. So for our core narrative beats, we have the iconic opening of the circle of life with the giraffes and the antelopes. We have that classic image of Rafiki holding Simba up on Pride Rock. We have the agonizing Mufasa falling into the stampede, all the way to us learning what it means to have no worries for the rest of our days. And of course, ending with Simba becoming the titular Lion King. But we also have the story critical path that ties it all together. For example, the movie needed to establish that Simba was next in line to be king. He was a little bit naive. He didn't know that he needed to earn it. He sort of just thought he deserved it. And we need to see that why this happens because it propels Simba's overall flea and then subsequent pride rock plunging into chaos. Similarly, Simba is need to be seen growing and learning and us as the viewers need to see that there's some sort of passage of time. Lastly, we need to see that Simba has learned of Scar's tyrannous reign, which of course propels the narrative to his penultimate return to Pride Rock, all for his confrontation for, uh, with Scar to make sense. You remove these paths, and there's a noticeable disconnect in the story. So, with the core narrative beats and our story critical path in mind, let's talk about why this is important in establishing your narrative budget. First, it generates a high level discussion. If you're working on a game and you are super excited, you're eager, you've heard me say core narrative beats and story critical path at least a dozen times now, you rush to your stakeholders and they're just like, I do not agree, these are not our core narrative beats or a story critical path, that is probably one of the best things that could happen because now you know what it's not. You can now work onto the second step of aligning your teams on what's most important. If they say that's not what our core narrative beats are, we can open a dialogue and discussion of then what are they? And then what are the most important links that hold it all together? It's also gonna keep us focused on what's important. As we go through the course of production, we're going to have many, many things get added, many, 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 many things get added with various scopes and various levels of importance. This is going to keep us focused on what we prioritize. If something doesn't circle back to a core narrative beat or a story critical path, we can now ask ourselves, how important is it really? How much should I invest? And of course, it also holds us accountable to these decisions. When we're adding an additional plot, or maybe we're trying to assess what needs to be cut, we can again go back to what our story pillars are or our golden path and say, hey, if we remove this, is this going to create a disconnect in our game? All right, so we've identified our core, our core themes. Where do we go from here? Enter what I like to call the three, two, one approach. This is ideally three tiers of investment, at least two methods of choosing what budget or investment a mission or narrative device should be, and ideally one, only one, goal or North Star that keeps decisions in context when it's time to make tough calls. So let's start off with our tiers of investment. These can be delineated in any clear category you want, either that's high, medium, or low, or my personal favorite, gold, silver, bronze. It includes a level of investment that can be expected within each tier, and of course, you guessed it, they're contextualized by how they fit into the story critical path and our core narrative beats. So let's start by defining each one, beginning with the goal tier. So now your goal is gonna be the best of the best. It's where you wanna spend the most time and effort, but it's also in places where players are most likely to encounter or experience it. It's high cost, sure, but it's also high value because not only is it on a story critical path, but it's also representing a core narrative beat for your game. 
So a good smell test for evaluating whether a mission in your game should be considered a part of the core narrative beats and a story critical path is by assessing its cut impact. If not having this mission in your game would remove a significant story pillar, then it's likely critical to the story. So for missions in your campaign, what qualifies as gold is simple. It's the intersection between our two main themes. But for other narrative devices at your disposal, it's important for you to decide as a team what gold looks like. So I've added some other examples of what a hypothetical gold tier could be for reference. I'm going to begin by saying high-end cinematics. My personal philosophy is that high-end cinematics are always exclusively used for the gold tier because typically cinematics are the most expensive. They're going to use your highest character quality, highest polish of animation, highest fidelity props and textures, and a lot of resources for multidisciplinary teams. But maybe you're not employing cinematics and you have some other high-end narrative devices. This could be some maybe highly polished authored narrative sequences or animation sequences. Maybe it's a highly polished camera. Essentially, this is what's going to be the most expensive, but it's also what's going to look the best. And you as a team get to decide what that is. As I said, I like visuals. So let's map this out. So again, we have our story critical path here in pale blue. And we have our core narrative beats in purple, just as with our Lion King example. And so when we talk about what belongs in the gold tier, what's high value, what's high visibility, but what's also integral to our story, and of course, that means it's going to receive the highest priority, we're talking about a mission or a narrative device on, within our story that intersects both paths. And that's going to look something like this. It's key to note here that the core narrative beats that are the most memorable, memorable also, beget, also exist in the end. So when we're planning out how we're going to spend our narrative dollars, we also have to plan for investing in those gold tier assets throughout the narrative of our story and not just in the beginning and not just in the end. This is so we can use them for all the moments that truly deserve them, no matter where it is in our narrative. So for mapping out the next tier, we're going to move on to silver. So medium to high visibility experiences, our silver tier reflects assets that are polished but don't have the same level of cost as gold assets. So what's medium to high visibility? For missions, these would be things that are on the story critical path but are off our core narrative beats. Another way to determine if this fits into the silver tier is to assess its cut impact. So if a mission or other narrative device in your story can be considered silver tier, if removing it would not remove a story pillar from your game, but would tangibly lower the overall narrative experience, i.e. the story would still make sense, but a player could tell that something is missing, or worse, it looks like something was cut in post, and that's not where you want to be. So other examples of the level of investment you can be assigning to devices that are considered silver tier are what I like to call reusing gold assets. So if you have a gold asset that can be curated in some small way with minimal lift and minimal investment, that is a prime target for something that can be in the silver tier category. Why? Because you know it's already going to be polished, and it's not going to take too much of your overall narrative dollars. Hopefully you already have some newer polished cameras that are lower cost than some of your gold tier of devices that you're using. And so if that's the case, you want to use them here as well. I would say in this tier that new cinematics are discouraged, and that's because, yes, cinematics are typically super, super cost intensive. So if you're going to put them in the silver tier, they should be rare. And if needed, they should be small in scope. That means your tech, your character count, the, and, your, and your complexity should be kept to a bare minimum. All right, we're back to our visual example. Again, we have our story critical path and our core narrative beats. The gold we know is reserved for those narrative devices that intersect both because they're going to take a lot more time and effort and thus can't be everywhere in your game. So if a narrative, narrative device or moment or mission is not defined as a core narrative beat but is still integral to the story, it belongs on your story critical path and that's where you want your silver tier narrative devices to be. And of course here we have in our example Simba just He's too excited, he can't wait to be king, but also we see that there's that passage of time that's integral to connect the two key moments of the end of the Lion King together. And of course, that leaves us with our last tier. The bronze tier is defined by low visibility missions or other narrative devices where reuse is the name of the game. It is highly encouraged and ideally a lower investment is all that's required. Something in the bronze tier is both off your core narrative beat and off your story critical path. And that means it is lower visibility. And of course, to think about it another way, we can calculate the cut impact. So if cutting it would have minimal effects on your overall core narrative beats, or it wouldn't remove a narrative link from the game, then it probably is either considered bronze tier or nice to have. If you're thinking to yourself, hey, if we removed this part of the game, if we removed this narrative moment, and players could not tell that we removed it, it's likely belonging in the bronze tier. 
All right, bronze tier devices. I'm just gonna say it right up front, right again, no cinematics. They're just too costly for something that players may or may not experience throughout the course of your game. Again, reuse is the name of the game here, so you wanna be reusing already existing narrative systems or sequences, or if you have a dynamic system or narrative system, you wanna be using it here too. And then if you're going to be employing other narrative devices, maybe you have animation sequences or authored cameras, minimally altered at best, because again, we wanna be saving our narrative dollars for our silver or gold tier devices. All right, so you've heard me say cost and refer to cost a few times, but I want to get into an example of how I tangibly calculate it. So in this Venn diagram, it helps to showcase how the cost of your mission or narrative device can determine the level of investment you can expect and thus where you'll get the most value utilizing them over the narrative in your game. We can consider the outer edges of each circle low cost and therefore require less of an investment. And so as we move further and start combining different attributes, for example, building an asset or a narrative device that takes more resources and more complexity, we start to increase our cost and thus our overall investment. And because we're increasing our overall investment, we wanna be saving that high cost device for where the players are most likely to experience it. Which brings us back to the moments that intersect our core narrative beats and our golden path. And you can see in this example here, if something say is high complexity and high time, or, and costs high time, it's going to be mainly a silver tier asset. If it costs all three, it's gonna be considered gold. And what do we wanna do with gold? We wanna be reserving them for the moments that matter, the ones that intersect our core narrative beats and our golden path. So this is what our investment would look like if we were to plot it out in a perfect world. But this is game development, and it's nothing short of what I like to call very perfect surprises along the course of production. And so these models aren't meant to show you what has to be true or what is truly black and white. In truth, your investment might not look like this. Your investment might look a little bit something like this, which is absolutely okay. These visuals are meant as a guide in order to help your team's decision making so that when you're adding a silver tier narrative device that's say off the story critical path, but you're doing it with intention, it's okay because you have made that intentional choice and have had those conversations of where, whether or not it deserves that level of investment. All right, so we got our three tiers, now what? Now you want to develop at least two methods of choosing what level of investment a mission or narrative device should be. This works because it's going to simplify decisions by bringing it back to your defined tiers. And this is why having three tiers is so important. You wanna be able to group things into either high, medium, or low, gold, silver, or bronze, and then assign a cost value to each. When you do this, it ensures consistency and accountability across a wide variety of narrative devices and missions on your project because you're always bringing it back to your core tier investments. And of course, it empowers your devs to work together more autonomously because you're providing a common reference for shared resources. So once you, have, once you know the key to narrative devices your game will employ, whether it's cinematics, whether it's another narrative device, you wanna represent them on a hierarchy. So I'm gonna show a sort of a quad table of what that looks like. I'm gonna go over each of the columns and rows so we can get a better idea of what we saw in our visual example represented in another way as a method of decision making for our devs. All right, so here we have one of our methods of decision making. In our first column, you see that I've put on top cinematics, that, or whatever your high cost narrative device is going to be. This, you want it to be your highest. On the right, on the left edge, you see something that says it is on the core narrative beats and the story critical path. The middle row says that it is off a core narrative beat, but it is on a story critical path. And the bottom row says it is off both the story, the story critical path and the core narrative beat. And so we go down the line and say, all right, if we're choosing, say we wanna put a cinematic here. We develop, we ask ourselves where it belongs in the story. If it's both intersecting both our core narrative beats and our story critical path, it's gold. If it only intersects the story critical path, it's silver or it's a, hey, should I really be spending all my dollars on a experience that is not gold or not a story pillar? And if it is intersecting neither, then maybe we don't wanna spend our highest value narrative device in this particular moment. And then moving along to the second column, we have the second narrative device you can employ. So this needs to be overall, typically, less costly than your first narrative device because that's gonna be the highest. And then we move on to the next column that is going to be your least costly narrative device. And so we're giving our developers options. We're saying, hey, 
Maybe we can't use a cinematic here, but what I can get you is a lower cost gold narrative three moment, depending on the cost that you're assigning to each. All right, hopefully you're still with me. The same can be said for missions. So this is another method for decision making that I've used in the past. This one focuses predominantly around how much of a level of investment you should spend based on where the missions appear within your game and the level of visibility. So from the top, it says, what type of mission is this? We're gonna go all the way to the right. If it is a side mission, I'm going to implore you to just go right down to bronze. Just save your storytelling dollars for the moments that matter. But maybe it is a main mission or you simply don't know yet. That's okay, the decision matrix will help you find where you need to be. So, is it integral to the story? Is it a core narrative beat? Yes, it is. Do you know if it is part of the main storyline? Is it part of one true story pillar? If it's not, maybe you should be using a silver tier device. If it is, move forward and have faith in using your gold. All right, we have all that in place. We talked about our themes. We have our methods for decision making, but what if there is still contention? What if there is a more complex call to make and your stakeholders simply cannot agree? Well, first, I'm hoping that you've come to my talk, a shameless plug there, and, but I'm also hoping that you've aligned with your teams on the core narrative beats early on in pre-production. But withstanding all of that, there's still one more tool in our tool belt for our approach. That's going to be the one goal, AKA the North Star. It asks us what pillars are truly unshakable. It asks, what must be true if all else fails? And three, and most importantly, what is your narrative's purpose? This could be a collection of the core narrative beats, but it works even better if we can pick just one, because this helps us focus our decision making and spend our narrative dollars in a way that services this one truth, the one North Star. And when all other decisions become more complex as we go throughout the course of production, it reminds us of what is truly important to us, what no matter of what else, needs to be true. That's where you want to spend the most, but that's also where we're likely to get the most bang for our buck. And if everything else in our game can be near, adjacent to, or on the periphery of our one North Star, then we know we've done something right. So let's go back to the beginning, where we have our core narrative beats for a Lion King example. It could be that your one North Star is that the audience needed to see the change from utopia to dystopia to back again, or it could be that Scar must be defeated, it could be that Simba needed to meet others that helped him on his journey to adopt a new mindset, or it could be that Simba must grow into king at the end. I would argue, and let's say for our example, that our one North Star is that Simba must grow into king at the end. In the beginning, he was going to be king, but let's be honest, he was pretty naive about it. Did he really deserve it? It's questionable. I don't wanna, I don't wanna badmouth Simba, great guy. But as we go through the story, as we go through the movie, we see that he learns what it means to truly be king. He, knows what it, he learns what it means to make the tough calls. He learns what it means to understand and accept his past and reconfront his biggest fear. And now everything else in that film just needs to fall in around that one North Star. So when we go back to our first tricky question, how do we tell great stories on a budget? I hope I've given you some tools and frameworks to start developing that structure for your own projects but I also hope that you've learned one more thing. When everything feels important, but time is limited, we can ask ourselves, what is the one goal or North Star that must be true and that we can come back to when decisions get tough? What are at least two methods of choosing what investment a mission or narrative device should be? And what are at least three tiers of investment that define the level of focus that should be devoted to the elements of our story based on where they can be found within the story critical paths and core narrative beats? So, but the real question isn't how do we tell great stories on a budget, but how do we stay true to the purpose of our story and how, we, how can we invest to truly service it from beginning, middle to end? And I hope I've given you some answers to help hopefully answer that tricky question here today. Thank you so much. My name is Vanessa Nayarko. You can find me on email, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Thank you for coming to my talk. We have some time for Q and A, questions and answers. This time, I'm also going to uh, do what it says on this card here, and remember, remind everyone to fill out their evaluations. Of course, filling out the evaluations for GDC and feedback is super important, not only because it tells us how we did, but it helps GDC promote new content that could be uh, could be encouraged for next year and, and all talks to come. 
So I greatly, I greatly appreciate your feedback and also taking the time to sit with me here today. Hi. Yeah, absolutely. So the question was if I could go back to the grid matrix. I'm just going to flip through the slide here. It is a very quiet room, and so I hope that means everybody has learned of core narrative beats and the story critical path. Hi, Vanessa. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, what escalation paths at the coalition look like if you really are stuck on budget decisions? Um, like, is it pretty much just like up through management levels or are there multiple departments that get involved? Um, I'm curious because uh, I deal with this a little bit at my company. It can get kind of messy. So I'm just kind of curious what it looks like for you. Yeah, so the question was about the escalation paths that exist when we're up against making those tough calls, if I understand that right. Yeah, when we're up against making those tough calls, what does that escalation path look like? And so for me, it always starts with trusting my developers and the teams that I work with. I truly believe that our teams are our experts. And so for me, it starts firstly at somebody raising the flag that, hey, this is going to take more time than I thought, or this is more complex than we are giving it, we're, we're giving it the correct amount of thought to. Sometimes we get an overall direction, an overall vision that looks great on paper. Sometimes it looks, looks a little bit too good on paper. And then it's up to us and our teams to really dissect how much of it, how much it's going to cost. And once we figure out whether or not maybe it just doesn't fit, what I usually do is work with my teams to understand, okay, what is our good, better, and best scenario? So the good scenario is that, hey, maybe we can do 70% of this or 50% of this. What does that look like? Tangibly, what does it represent? And I always ask and implore others to not showcase what we want to be true, but showcase how it is. If the risk is a risk, the best thing we can do is float it up to the top. And so what I do is I speak with my leads, I speak with my directors, I speak with my production director, and make sure everybody has a visibility on the risk and that we're over communicating on it. I usually try to get the teams together within a breakout session to say, hey, this is what we are up against. These are the possible solutions our team has come up with. What do you think would be the best course of action? And we move forward when everybody's in agreement on what solution that should be. Uh, hi. Uh, I was wondering the, uh, the tiers of investment of uh, gold, silver, and bronze, uh, that seems really helpful uh, as like breaking it down broadly. But I was wondering if in the projects you've worked on, if uh, any of the Storytelling beats have dis have demanded uh, more granularity. Like, okay, between all of our golden moments, this one is the most important. Does does it help to like categorize that into like say a platinum tier or uh, like how <laughs> how do you um how do you pursue uh, greater granularity when you know you're stuck in a room with two gold beats and one of them needs to be higher than the other? Yeah. So the question was. How do, we, how do we prioritize even within the gold tiers or even within the silver tier or bronze tiers? Um, and you know, it's not, we're not wanting to strong arm anyone, but usually something that I like to employ is if we're deciding between two gold moments, I ask if we had to lose one of these today, which one would it be? And if the answer is we can't lose either of them, we go into the whys. And I think it's always important to set aside, okay, what is the why for gold scenario A? What is the why for gold scenario B? And usually when you ask people the why and like, okay, so that's important to our story, why is it important? As you go through the whys and you keep going to different levels of granularity, you can find out what is the most important moment. Sometimes they're saying, oh, well, I, I need it to be true because this has to happen within the game. But then we're actually opening a dialogue of whether or not it truly needs to happen within the game. And of course, if you're bringing in the historical data of, you know, we simply don't have time for both of them, or one of them is going to have to get less of a treatment, then it comes to our decision makers on, okay, now that we've identified the why in our, you know, just a quick table of why this is important, why this is important, we get a sense of, based on how long the list is, what is truly the platinum moment. I've also worked on projects where we have what we call uh, wood, which is less than bronze, um, <laughs> but usually I like to stay within <laughs> the three tiers because I'm just like, oh, you know, how granular can we get? I also want to say that it's worth noting as well is that within your narrative devices, gold might look different for each one. So if you're working on a cinematic, you can say that a gold cinematic is maybe, you know, your very highly polished characters, but potentially if you're working on a mission giver system that happens within 
the actual inside of your world and inside of your, your gameplay, maybe gold for you makes it look like, hey, we need to make sure we have a good Vista shot. So within each narrative tier, you need to be defining what gold looks like. You can be using the same terminology between each, so you're aligning on your shared resources, but you should have that level of granularity that says, okay, silver means this for this narrative device, and silver means something different for that narrative device. But as long as it's in a place where everybody can access it and they understand the difference, then I think you're in a good spot. Awesome. Hi. Thank you, Vanessa. Really outstanding presentation. I appreciated how methodical and just well thought out your approaches. It makes a lot of sense. But my question relates to if you've experienced where someone's method of decision making was, I outrank you, or it's a business call, or I'm the senior developer, where even if your narrative team has consensus, someone else who's in a senior position can just say, well, what I say goes. So despite this really thoughtful work, when you have these other internal management factors, how have you navigated that in the past, or how would you recommend navigating those dynamics? Yeah, that's a really good question. So the question for anyone who may have missed it is, how do we navigate uh, if someone would said, hey, yeah, I'm glad you came up with all of these great methods, but we're just going to go one way, a way that doesn't represent what we've talked about here before. And for that, I just want to go back, if I can boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna go back a little bit, keep going. There we go. So when I talk about generating a high level of discussion and holding us accountable on those decisions, I personally have not experienced what we're talking about here, but what I like to do is when I talk about holding people accountable, it's the stakeholders. That's the first level of people that you want to make sure are in line with your core narrative beats and your story critical path. And that's because if they are in line with it, we can hold them accountable. My favorite thing to do uh, that, I, that I, well, I love sending out notes, but I also love the fact that working from home allows us to record all meetings. Um, so we can always remember what we said we were going to do and what we agreed upon. And so when we're, I also make sure that we're constantly refreshing them with this knowledge. It's like, hey, we're moving into mission A. Remember, we discussed that gold looks like this. And because it's usually your stakeholders, maybe four or five, we locked eyes. We agreed upon the fact that this is what we're doing. Before we disseminate that information to the team, we agree upon it at a higher level so that when we're going through the different tiers, it's not something that's just production's decision. It's production and direction's decision. It's production, directions, and the depth decisions. It's everyone's decision. So everyone needs to be bought in in order for these methodological processes to work. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. We are at the end of the talk. If you have other questions, I will be, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I should have ended on that one. That's, yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, what, what? Ah, we did it, <laughs> okay. That is the end of the talk. Thank you again so much. If anyone wants to ask any questions, I believe it's, is it 204? Yeah, 204, I'll be in there to take any other questions. Again, I really appreciate your time this morning. Please enjoy the rest of your GDC. Also, please provide any feedback. It's really welcome and appreciated. Thanks again, everybody.